Dr. Jan, so uh, this also borders on essentially governance for that matter. And especially because if Parliament and indeed the Speaker communicates a decision based on the provisions of the Constitution and also makes reference to a precedence that had been set. And now we are at this point where you would have two persons holding themselves up as majority leaders of the same parliament. And the business of parliament has had to come to a halt, adjourned indefinitely, because the speaker had no option from what we saw on Tuesday to go on that path, who suffers? Uh, thank you very much, and uh, good morning to all your listeners and to all my friends and colleagues listening from Tumu. I, I say, mm. I have to mm. greet them in my local so they will know that I'm on TV. It, it, it makes you know, sense. Very uh, important. Uh, right. Okay. I want to start your question by also asking another classical question which is one of the foundational studies on the plurality system of decision making. Mm -hmm. There's a question posed by one of the greatest governance scholars, Robert Dahl. He has a very simple question, who governs? Robert Dahl's who governs theory, try to find out in a city where it seems that people think that the elites, only the elites govern, that government has so much power. But in, when in reality, who actually governs. It was one of the seminal studies that even today, students of public policy and progress democracy try to understand to know how power in the democracy is rather dispersed with so many people and that not only one person has the power to rule. If you keep who governs at the background and then you begin to ask yourselves, these incidents, these incidents of somebody crossing carpet and either losing or sit or not, how did it come about? Mm -hmm. There are historical precedents in Ghana. If you go back to especially the Leman years, and mm -hmm. some of the Bougier years, and other years, instances where MPs were voted, they came to the house, those MPs came, and then either because of political convenience or whatever it is, for one we said, cross carpet. And those cross carpets were consequential. Those cross carpets, some of them even led to fact. There are people who think that the Lehman administration in particular mm -hmm. was weak. And okay. part of it was because of some of these, the behaviors of some of those MPs and some, of, and some other people and other regimes. So the idea is that it created, for one way, a rather unstable parliament that affected the governors. Okay. So if you look clearly at the historical incidents and if you look at it through a political lens, the framers of the current constitution were trying to avoid similar incidents where there is a president and then some members in, in, in parliament, due to their personal, parochial, or political interest, decide to, for one way, cross carpet to that side, mm -hmm. making the work in the house impossible for an executive president or for the president. And so you must keep, if we keep that historical incident, uh, uh, incidents in mind, they would then understand that there was an intention that there has to be that attempt of what? Crossing the carpet. Okay. And making it impossible or very difficult for the party with the majority, in other words, the, what the party that the guy Ghanaians have voted for to govern. And that that crossing of the carpet should have a quantitative, a both a quantitative effect on the governance of the state. That means that it it is seen that that crossing of the carpet, theoretically at least, should have an effect on how the nation is being governed. That means that if that crossing of the carpet prevents, let's say, a president from passing his budget, if that crossing of the carpet prevents a president from having his ministers approved by parliament, if that crossing of the carpet prevents a, a, a president from having, uh, 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 from approving a loan or mm -hmm. a government, budget, that means that there is a material and a quantitative effect, negative effect on governance. Okay. It was supposed to then prevent this kind of thing from happening. Right. So that we don't come in and then, look, as, as I said, we can always give the examples, as, and, and as my brother was talking about in the United States, where it takes one senator to flabuster something, and then you realize the whole government is brought to what it's done. So it was supposed to prevent that kind of thing from happening. 
So if you look at those two, if you look at the idea of who governs, and if you look at that historical insight of the fact that there was supposed to be either the threat of or the reality of the disruption of government business, mm -hmm. then you can see that there has to be that physical, quantitative move across the so-called proverbial, proverbial uh, uh, carpet from that to happen. And that the uh, constitutional framers were trying to prevent and being reminded of hindsight to prevent that from happening. Then the third thing we have to add to and sometimes uh, this happens. I was talking to a, a student on campus yesterday. We do not practice parliamentary sovereignty or supremacy in Ghana. We do not. Okay. Ultimate power in Ghana does not lie with parliament. Ultimate power in Ghana lies with the, with, uh, with the constitution. In the United Kingdom, they have uh, uh, parliamentary superiority. That means yeah. that whatever the, the, the parliament, uh, uh, the UK parliament says, is a law. The UK, the UK parliament has the final say. In Ghana, we do not. Well, I've heard that argument as to whether that can be generally or flatly, as it well, were, well, abused. It's one that we, we, Fine. we will subject to Good. the legal conversation. Fine. So I'm talking from the political perspective. We can okay. have the, the, the legal perspective because that I'm not training in, in the law. So okay. in parliament, that is why in the UK, they, they, when they, 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 it was it used to be said that when the parliament of the UK is sitting down, they can turn a man into a woman, literally, whatever the law they make is, is permanent. But that in Ghana, we don't have that. In Ghana, then the constitution is. And that's why we, uh, all office holders swear to uphold and defend the constitution of Ghana. And so, if you then have that kind of thing, that is where the separation of powers then comes from. And as my brother was saying, that look, a president can refuse to sign a bill signed by parliament, mm -hmm. and then in the same time, parliament can what impeach a president removed from from office. Our constitution also then envisage that we are going to have this constant knocking of heads between the executive and the legislature. It envisage that the constitution also buys in and, and, and budgets for the fact that. These battles are going to continue, and in fact, they, they will continue whether you have a supermajority in parliament, whether you have a minority in parliament, or whether the parliament is split. And that is why you then need a neutral arbiter. You then need somebody to be able to say that, look, this is where we draw the line, and this is where it comes. So for me, with the idea that the parliament is not supreme, then it then means that we need somebody who can then, for one to be either be an adult in the room, or somebody who can say that, this is where the line is drawn. Let's just understand thing. Something. Parliament is hyper-partisan. Parliament is all about political shoe-booting. Whatever happens in parliament is about politics. It's about partisanship. And so people in parliament are not necessarily there to fight for what their national interest. But sometimes the partisan interest come in. Sometimes the ideological interest come in. Sometimes the philosophical interest comes inside. And parliament is all about power. And so when you have all these things going on, then it then becomes important for us to understand that somebody or the Supreme Court then start out to make these things. And that is why I think that it's important that when something is of this magnitude happens, then we need a finality. And that's why for me, I'm happy that this issue is before the Supreme Court. And I'm happy and I'm hoping to wait for the Supreme Court to rule, to bring a finality to this. Because from a political perspective, I personally think that Speaker Michael Quay was wrong. Why was... You, you, you believe that Speaker Michael Quay was wrong? Yes. At, at, at the time... At the time he did it, I believe that he was wrong to just come out and at least the one person alone to declare that thing, I believe that he was wrong from a political perspective. But the, diff, the thing was that... Because that ruling did not have any material, quantitative, or qualitative difference, as in the majority of the people were so much that it never affected the business house, we ignored it. And that precedent has been followed right now. Well, if you say you probably ignore, there are some persons at the time who spoke, but their voices were in the minority, so it wasn't listened to. But a majority of your members, mm -hmm. I mean, your party members, mm -hmm. were hailed the, the speaker at the time for that decision that he took. Yeah. which has now become a president. Yes, I'm not speaking for them. I'm speaking for myself. And I'm saying that that thing, that decision was wrong. And I think that the, the reason why that decision did not metamorphose and finally make it the Supreme Court was because materially it did not make an impact because the, the, the majority of the people was that strong. And so it didn't have any effect. Mm -hmm. And I think that today this uh, decision is so consequential because it has both a qualitative and a quantitative difference in that it directly changes the power dynamics in the house.
So mm -hmm. it, it is that. So for me, it's the one uh, decision that was wrong in this one day, we didn't need, that is where I think that where the Supreme Court comes in. And that's where I think that we need to understand. Now, it, you know, it gets to something that uh, it gets into. When the uh, Speaker of Parliament came to the House, I don't know whether he made any pronouncement on the rule of the Supreme Court. They did not. That's that right. means that he ignored the rule of the Supreme Court. Is, is, is that fair yeah, to he, say he that he acknowledged? He no, no, you know, no. it was not. The decision was not for you to either acknowledge its existence or not. So he acknowledged that he had received. Yes. Now, again. What, what, what declaration were you expecting from him? No, what I'm saying is that I accept. Did he accept the decision or he rejected the decision? Was he supposed to do that in Parliament on Tuesday? No, I, I'm, 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 as, as I said, the Supreme Court says that stop what you are doing. The Supreme no, Court, the, 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 the Supreme Court did not say he should stop. Mm -hmm. He said the execution of this decision should be stayed until the final determination of the case. So what was the execution of the decision? What was the execution of the decision? The execution, uh, that's what I'm saying. Again, uh, Doc, Doc is here, he may uh, get on the law. From the political person, he says that you said that this people have been what? Removed from the house. Or this people no more uh, uh, belong here. So... Power C, the four of them. That was the decision. So if the Supreme Court says stay that decision, I mean, what does that mean? And you think that the Supreme Court has No, I'm not saying I think. I'm uh, saying that uh, like, what uh, does uh, that mean? If you say that these people have been, let me use a word as legal, you are sacked from this classroom. Mm -hmm. And the Supreme Court says, don't do that. Stay that decision. If that is, if that is what you're saying. If the Supreme Court says, then it means that don't sack them. So that's what I'm saying, that you are saying you are expecting the speaker to have made do not say that, look, so if you on, were not, so that, my, my, that, that's what I'm saying. What, what were you expecting? I was expecting to say that, okay, the Supreme Court says I shouldn't sack the Supreme from Parliament, or I shouldn't claim, so I'm not sacking them from Parliament. Or the Supreme Court says I shouldn't sack the Supreme, but I think that I have the power to sack them, so I'm going to continue and keep them. At least, that I needed, I think that some of us deserve that amount of clarity. Okay. It never so, came. So, just, I, I don't know if you did listen to him on Tuesday, but he was quite clear that mm -hmm. he acknowledged the receipt mm -hmm. of the, the service yes. and indicated he had referred it to his lawyers. Yeah. So again, so he, he I, has to put in... He has to put in a response. Mm -hmm. And that response should not be done on the floor of Parliament. I, I hope you, you, you follow me. No, no, I don't. You, you, based on a service that has been given or a directive to him that stay and this was a legal one for that matter mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and he has directed his lawyers to look into it and respond you are expecting that the speaker will sit in parliament and declare that yes i will or no i won't wouldn't that have rather feathered the chaos that we are all seeking to prevent as i said from my perspective, that is what I thought with, that was going to happen. Because I'm looking at another president's being set. I'm looking at another president being set. There are a lot of cases before the Supreme Court now. Some of them directed uh, uh, squarely at the executive arm of government. Some of them directly at the president of the republic, asking for this. So I'm beginning to ask myself a question. What if tomorrow the same Supreme Court which was to make a ruling, and then the president of the republic too says, you know what, I'm going to... Ignore it. What happens to our republic? Uh, okay. Would, can, I, can I also maybe just interject here, just to ask uh, Prof a uh, very no, simple question? Yes, not, okay. Not, 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 uh, yes. So, um, especially making reference to the, the presidency and so on, um, again, like he rightly said, both he and I, we are political scientists, so mm -hmm. we are not educated in the law. And that's why, Alfred, last week I said I wasn't going to make any pronouncements because I don't know the law. So Indeed. I don't want to fall foul of, of the uh, law. Of the law. Um, but we saw a situation where uh, recently, I mean, there were bills that were passed by parliament. And then somebody ran to the court. Mm -hmm. And the presidency says, don't bring this here because the matter is before court. Until, the LGBTQ yes, matter. until the matter is resolved. And I could see some parallels here with what the speaker is. I mean, what the speaker did um, on on uh, on that day. Apart, uh, apart from the fact that, I mean, for me, the most important is the national interest that he took into account when he was making that decision. Look, our country was on the brink. 
serious on that day our country was on the brink. Mm -hmm. Um, and I so, so you think that, that, that any declaration of the speaker would have actually feathered the chaos, certainly again, without a doubt. Again, uh, again without a doubt, I, I think I was making, I, I, I yes, I, I you conclude on your okay. point. The, the, uh -huh. the two things you said, you are conflating two different things. Oh, okay. what is that? You are conflating in the uh, in the case he's talking about, the Supreme Court had not made uh, any, any, any declaration in the LGBTQ, the, the speaker has not yet made the Supreme Court has not told anybody to is it cease or stop. No. That has not been made. It has not been. In this particular case, the Supreme Court has. So I'm asking myself, did, they, did the decision of the Supreme Court have any impact? Well, so so that, that's, the, that's the difference. I don't know what you understand. But, okay. in, in that case, somebody ran to the Supreme Court to try to seek uh, a refuge. But the court has not yet uh, 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 decided on that. But in this particular case, at least from a political perspective mm. and a separation of powers perspective, the Supreme Court has made an independent decision from this. They have granted whatever the person went to, to look for. So me, that is what I'm saying. Because it says a dangerous president. Today, 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 and, and, you are, and, and, I'm, and that's, this is where I'm coming. The, the, the same speaker is before the Supreme Court in the uh, LGBTQ case. Mm. What happens if today that Supreme Court too was ruled and then the president of the said, you know what, I'm, I'm not going to expect it. I'm going to let... To, 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 to my lawyers think about it and they not do it. What? Where are we going? No. I, he, he, no. Okay. So for, for me, that is that is the way I'm understanding. That's the way because okay. it is the same so, thing. The same Supreme Court making decisions. And if you can now choose either one to accept the screen decision or two, when to accept that decision, when to accept it? Because I thought again, I mean, we did that when the Supreme Court makes a decision, it is, it is now. This is our decision you take it. I don't know that you can have a choice to say that, well, you know what? I will think about it and then I will know whether I can accept it later on. Maybe it's possible. No, it's, Maybe it's see, possible. The, what you are saying, uh, you're saying, you're saying he's thinking about it. That's why I was very clear in, in the mm -hmm. communication of the speaker on that day mm -hmm. that he's referred the matter to his lawyers to respond. Mm -hmm. Under our law, any court directing a stay of execution mm -hmm is automatically stayed for seven days. The applicant can enforce it only after seven days. Okay. Last Tuesday was within the seven day rule. Okay. Within which the okay. order was frozen. Okay. So the speaker did not do anything wrong. I okay, just fine. To... Again, as I said, I'm, 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 you, you, you're coming from a legal person, coming from a political person. So, because the, the, sometimes the appearance of it, because I'm beginning to ask myself, therefore, we've had, uh, some, um, I, I looked at something, even throughout the numerous years of the Jerry John Rawlings administration, both in the military and in the civilian, I don't think he has ever refused any order from the Supreme Court, or even for the courts in general. They have had so many battles. So I'm hoping that, just as precedents are being set, that nobody, that no executive president, sees what is happening now, and now begin to think that there's a precedent that I can choose to accept a Supreme Court decision or not to accept it. I'm hoping that president is not set. I'm hoping that, going, that and, and for me, that is what worries me because especially now, we are in an election year. And if the last two, three elections are anything to go by, they all ended up the Supreme Court. I don't want a situation where we wake up one day and then the Supreme Court rules us and then a president is now deciding whether he should or he can accept it. No, I'm praying and hoping that we get to the same way that it, 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 uh, when the Supreme Court makes a decision, it becomes supreme, it becomes ultimate. Because once that happens, the, the finality we have, as I said, the Supreme Court all over the world, and not only in Ghana, have their weaknesses, have their strengths, have their prejudices, have their biases, they have all these things. Okay. But every mature democracy then understands that they, they, uh, we have to rule a line somewhere. And that somewhere has always been what the Supreme Court said. Well, the moment we now try to now to begin, I hope we don't get there. Mm. That we, the hope we don't get a situation where people now try to treat the Supreme Court as a buffet. Okay, I will choose this over this, I will accept this over this. I hope we do not get there. And I hope well, what is happening here doesn't become a precedence that another speaker one day now begin to choose because the moment we do that, we are getting into really dangerous territory, and that will not be good for this republic, and that will not be good be good for our democracy. So for me, that is my prayer. That's my whole prayer. Legally, it may not be so, and I'm sure that you are, you are putting that. But politically, I'm beginning to see that because you see, power corrupts, and absolute power will always corrupt absolutely. And where people know and think that they can now maneuver with these things, 
Politically, it may be difficult for all of us. Well, so okay. we sh it shouldn't it shouldn't be that. Finally, I want to uh, not I, I don't I, I think my son will do my time. Yes, you, you when I look at the, some of the things that are happening before the pandemic, people were worried. Are we going to have another January seventh, twenty twenty? Are we going to see blues being thrown? Are we going to see fiscals? Are we going to see people literally beating each other up in that parliament? And then are we going to have the military? Are we going to see that? People were bracing for it. The majority leader, Honorable Alexander Afonia Mackin. Well, you can safely say the NPP leader saved us. He saved the country from that spectacle. He called for restraint. He demonstrated leadership. He demonstrated maturity. And he demonstrated decorum by pulling his forces back. We never saw that spectacle. And for me, the whole country, I think the whole country took a, a sigh of relief that that uh, spectacle, because remember, it doesn't matter whether somebody was legally wrong or legally right. That spectacle, if it had happened, would have been one of the worst days in our political history. Mm. Anybody that is able to say that no matter what happens, I'm going to restrain myself. I'm going to show, I'm saying we should, and in our politics, we should begin celebrating such moves. Because sometimes a small move like that prevents worse things from happening. Mm. And for him to be able to say that, look, 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 whatever be the case, we'll fight this another time. We are not finished. We are not throwing the towel. We'll fight another time. But for now, and for the sanity of the state, and for the sanity of the young ones watching, and for the sanity of our democracy, I'm going to pull my forces back. I'm mm -hmm. going to show restraint. That is worth celebrating.